Hey guys, how's it going? It's James here. Good to see you again. Welcome back to the Soundline. So what we're going to be doing for you guys today is we have behind me here a Well-Tempered Labs Simplex uh, turntable and basically we've already unpacked it from the box, we've got it all laid out here on a nice large table and this is just kind of an instructional video to help you guys, you know, uh, if you're following along at home, maybe you have one of these turntables, help you get it assembled in the correct order. Um, so I've got Frank here, he's going to be helping me assemble this thing and I'm going to be filming it and doing a little bit of voiceover and probably helping him as well. So without further ado, Hope you enjoy this video. So what you want to do guys want is uh, get it out of the large box that it all comes shipped in. It all comes stacked like this. You want to get a nice, we can see we've got a nice big table here to work with. We've got our plinth, the big piece of foam which has got the platter and a few other bits and pieces. And then this one here has all of our parts like our tone arm, power supply, our counterweights, a little bit of, um, little bit of fluid for our tone arm and our bearing as well as required tools and that and there's a little finger lifter. So what we want to do is we start with our tone arm, oh, sorry, we start here with our plinth. Step one. Step one is um, the bearing assembly, it's the bearing cup. So this is the bearing cup which is kind of what obviously it goes in this large hole here and that is what the golf ball pivot point kind of suspends in in the fluid and you'll see that a little bit later on. Okay, so what we do, James, is we just put the bearing cup, see that's why you don't want my fingers in it, because it in, loosely in, in situation, and tighten you. So that, that set screw is already in the plinth? Yes. Already. Okay, cool. And just firmly tighten it, don't winch it up. Just uh, enough to stop it from moving around? Yeah, and then you then the next step would be to take the arm suspension tone arm pillar, we call it, which is this. So what we've got here, guys, is the suspension pillar. And this is going to go in this slot here and it's going to hold the string up that carries the tone arm. Nylon suspension actually. There you go. We have that over there, like so. Next step is the, what would you call this, arm the, 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 arm, the tone arm rest. Tone arm rest. And that goes in the hole identical. And the tone arm rest is never tightened up completely because it has a little device on it which allows you to lock the, the simplex arm yeah. when you're transporting it. You can twist that and lock it and lock the arm. Yes. So you don't need, you yeah. don't over tighten so, that. So well you don't you guys you don't need to over tighten this one because you actually want this to be yeah. able to spin a wee bit. And the reason for that is once the tone arm once you're done playing your record, the tone arm rests in here and then you can twist this like Oops, like that, and it actually prevents the tone arm from coming up and jumping yeah, back when, onto the. Yeah, when you're transporting. Turn, exactly. So you can do that for when you're transporting your um, turntable around. So the next, next step is suspending the tone arm. So you need to be a little bit careful that you don't dangle the limo plug too too much tension on that. Okay. It's a little bit delicate. It's not totally delicate. Okay. So what you do, guys, you take this little rubber uh, right. grommet off of this chrome pillar here. You put it under the nylon uh, cord, which is suspending the golf ball. Start like this, guys, with it just hanging over, and then you take one of the sides, wrap it around once more, so that you've gone one and a half times. Yeah. And now what we want to do is put an anti-clockwise twist on it. So if we turn this way, like that, and then put it you gently it. lower that in there, and then slot this back onto the metal. Pillar. And then you can just rotate this to get it relatively uh, level and then for the time being we can just set that in there. And the reason for the twist is that that gives you the anti-skate. Yes, yeah, so that's the anti-skate, that's like a natural anti-skate uh, device right there. And then we can get our little plug. Does this, line up? this does line up a certain way but it will only go in one way. So we just have to, you can, almost can't tell, but if you look carefully there is a really wide pin in there. And if you line that up with the wide hole on this jack point here, it will just plug in and don't push down on this outer bit, if you push down from the top it's spring actions on and then it's locked and then if you want to remove it again, if you're taking the tone arm off for some reason, you pull up on this outer shell 
and that releases it and it comes out. And then put it back on, just from the top, it clicks in and you know you're in. Okay, okay guys, so I've just taken the tone arm off the turntable again for demonstration purposes because next up is mounting the cartridge. Now, you can do this a couple of ways depending on what you prefer. You can actually mount the cartridge onto the tone arm after it is on the uh, platter or on the plinth if you want, or if you prefer you can do it before you put the tone arm on. Now you can do that either with a little protector cap on your cartridge if, if your cartridge comes with one, or even better, if your cartridge has a removable stylus, we can take that out like that. Now our stylus and our tip are completely separate and safe. We can put that over there. And now it's completely safe to screw this on here. I can move that around. I'm not going to damage it in any way. And we can screw that on there. And now as you're doing it with the simplex, you also put your finger lifter on. So I'm going to do that now. We use the screws that were in the cartridge. Yeah, maybe no, 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 no. The screws should be here, here. Oh, that's right, because well tempers use nut yeah. and bolt. Okay, so now the hardware it comes with, guys, with, um, for this particular cartridge, we've got a whole bunch of screws. I think so, these ones are all the same. We've got a couple of different lengths of screws here, so we're going to use these long ones because this cartridge we have, it's got quite a big base on it. We've also got a couple of little plastic washers that we're going to want, and this one here actually has nuts and bolts as opposed to the thread being built into this cartridge. Okay, so I've got my cartridge with the stylus removed and I've got my nuts and bolts here. What I'm going to do is start by kind of attaching one of the bolts and nuts to the cartridge but not fully tightening it up because what this allows me to do, if I just slot that onto my cartridge like so with a little bit of excess, now what I can do is because this tone arm doesn't have like circular holes drilled through it, it actually has slots. I can slot the cartridge on like this and I like to get the nylon washer on top of the tone arm so that it protects that for when you tighten it up. And then we just use our fingers to sort of tighten up the nut a wee bit. And now we can put the second bolt through, but this one, oh no, we don't have to take the nut completely off of this. Get that one up. And now that that's in there, we can get our little screwdriver. You don't have to use the little flat blade that comes with um, your cartridges, you can use like a bigger one if it makes it easier for your fingers. On the outside of the tone arm for this simplex, underneath the nylon washer you want to put your little finger lifter, which is this little half circle looking thing. Like that, put the nut back on, and now we can slot this back over top of there, get our screwdriver, and tighten this up nice and tight. Look, over tight. Just, nice. just as tight as finger tight lets you go. Yeah. Now, next step is attaching these little uh, leads to the back of the cartridge. You do want to be very careful with these because they are very fragile. Sometimes we recommend using tweezers if you uh, have good enough dexterity to try and, um, uh, you know, not pinch them too hard. But most cartridges will be color coded to let you know what colors go where. So we have red, white, green, and blue. So I like to start at the top ones so that I'm not working behind myself. There's white. Top right is green, no top white is red. And if you're colorblind like me, it is always worth getting a second opinion. <laughs> and uh, But what it is also worth checking is that your colors uh, is, you know, doing it color coded because some cartridges actually do have their pins in different positions. So blue won't always necessarily be in the bottom left. They may have decided to put it in the top right for some reason. And there we go, now our leads are all nicely attached. Okay, so now we have our cartridge attached to our tone arm, so we can go ahead and put our tone arm back on our plinth now. And following that we will attach, in fact I might just now, because it's going to be easier, I might put the uh, stylus back in and then put a the little protective cover over it. Like that, there we go, just got to get the right angle. Slots in, now we've got this little protective cover which will keep the tip safe while I'm attaching the tone arm to the plinth. So that just goes over like that and then up there, now that's nice and safe. Okay, so now time to put the tone arm back on the plinth. If you start by slotting that over there, you can rest this down like that because we have our cartridge protected. Get the nylon string and wrap it around again. And so when you've got it the right amount of turns, got it, you'll see the strings are coming off both sides of the grommet like that. And now we do an anti-clockwise turn like that, so you get a little crisscross of the strings. 
lower that into there and slide the grommet onto the middle bar and kind of try and line it up above the center of the cup and now you can just rest your toenail down in there and if it's sitting a bit funny you just twist the grommet to fix it and that actually becomes your azimuth adjustment later on when we're tuning the toenail if it's sitting off to one corner I'll show you this from above if it's sitting off to one corner like this what you do is you you kind of angle this bar like this to get that above the center of the cup right like that and then you move the grommet further along until it sits about right so it looks like we're still a bit too far that way so I'm just gonna that went a little bit too far getting it's just a little bit of playing and getting it closer and closer and this will become easier as well once we've got the fluid in there which is kind of uh, what would you call it the damping fluid yeah, the, the silicon damping fluid and, and also once you get the platter on you this will level itself and it just takes a bit of time yeah so it just, this is just a rough um exactly at the moment. Yeah. so yeah just rough get it as centered as you can and then yeah you'll do fine tuning later on again now remember to plug your little plug back in i do like to look at it and try and find the big fat pin which on this case is the bottom there and that lines up with the bottom and remember you push from pinching this bit here not that because it won't go on if you pinch that section there so pinch this and push down and it clicks and there we go now we will for the time being lock our tone arm which just is like this locked and see now what you'll see is I can't actually lift the tone arm up out of there it's nice and locked Okay, I believe the next step is the platter. So they've got a nice long spindle in the center here which makes it quite easy to grab. You'll see it goes down there as well. Now make sure you get this the right way around guys because it only goes one way correctly. You'll see that there is a point on this side and a, I guess you call it a round over dome on the top. The point goes down. You want the point to be going down into this section here. Now we do put a little bit of lubrication in there. So Frank has here some uh, some bearing lube and this the kit does actually come with two separate lubrications and they label which ones are for which so you've got some tone arm fluid and your bearing lubrication. Frank already has some in a separate bottle that we're going to use. Okay so guys if you take this out of the box and your triangle isn't pointing straight at the uh, at the motor just use like a flat blade screwdriver or a popsicle stick and just very carefully rotate that white piece of plastic until it's pointing at the motor. Now the main thing to do is not overdo the oil. So how many drops do so you do? So you want about four or five drops. Don't I, don't do what I just did then. That's got a bit much. Um, come out a bit quick. So but largely we'll just get a cotton bud and drain a bit of that out. So you only need a four or five four, drops four or five of the drops of the bearing oil. lube. Okay. So now that you've got your four to five drops of bearing lubrication in there, you can just take this hold it by the spindle not the side if you just hold it like this it's nice and long it's not going to fall out and now very gently look from down here side line that up with the middle and just slowly lower it in and it will eventually come to a stop and it will sit nice and flat and you can just spin it with your finger to see that it is spinning freely and it should have some good momentum to it and keep going for a few rotations and that's the main body of it installed. The next step is to put the string from the motor around the platter, which is a pretty simple process. The belt is a, poly, it's a the polyester thread. So on this card here, guys, it comes with two of them. So you just get one of them off of there, and there's little cuts in the cardboard here. You just very carefully, because you do want to be just gentle with it, even though it is very strong. You want to just carefully unwind it off the cardboard like so but this is why they give you two of them there we go we got that free now it'll seem like one long solid piece of string but it's actually a loop so if you just find the loop at the end and separate it with your fingers and then you can gently pull it out until it becomes a great big circle and there is a knot pre-tied in it for you but you do want to do it carefully so that it doesn't make itself into more of a knot like I have a wee bit. You've got it, once you've got it all the way out, there are two little fine pieces at the end there. I don't know if the camera can see that. Just leave them as they are. And the way I find easiest to put this on, get it around the top of the pulley. And then I kind of put it in the middle of the pulley with my finger and I just run it around like this whilst using the other hand to keep it level with the pulley. Perfect. In fact, what you can do is just put your finger there like that 
and it does have a little bit of stretch in it keep that finger held and then eventually it'll pop on you see that guys yeah it looks like the camera is looking in the right direction and so you see it it has no groove that it sits in which is why it can take a couple of tries but just keep this finger pushed with it against there and use this finger uh, your second finger to kind of keep it on this side of the pulley and then you're all set to go final step is the dampening uh, silicon fluid that goes beneath the pivot point there so Frank has just explained to me guys if you see here the little knot that's in the nylon thread it's kind of hard to focus on but some people do ask does this not affect the sound when it hits the pulley does it make a little bump in the music it absolutely does not because <laughs> not because when it's gone around the platter like this this little nylon thread is tensioned making this transition from one side of the knot to the other incredibly smooth and no matter how many times it goes around here the wires will always be on the outside of the pulley like that which means that the pulley never even sees it so it doesn't affect the music whatsoever and I think it is very interesting to note that it will never ever accidentally find itself on the inside there even before when I tried to put it like this with my fingers the next time see how as soon as it came out of the pulley there if I put it on the inside as soon as it comes out of the pulley it's instantly back on the outside so it'll never find itself hitting the pulley by accident yes so that's a big part of tuning a turntable guys if you're turntable like this one has the ability to adjust all of the angles of the tone arm and everything like that a key part of good sounding turntables is having the tone arm perfectly level um, level not necessarily with the table not necessarily with the platter but level with sea level so if you or is that right or do we want to say that we want it level with the to uh, with the plat with the plinth sorry no with the platter yeah okay so you want your tone arm to be level with your platter best way to do that is just to have it positioned around here oh, we're off the golf ball if you have your turntable on the edge of a table like this we can come down here and you can see that that tone arm is way too high up at this end so that's when you want to adjust the scrub screw with the supplied allen key just make it loose enough so that you can slide this up and down and then bring this down to a level where as best you can that's that's starting to look a bit more level now stays there. so what we need to do guys is we actually need to elevate our column here and bring it up higher and all of this is adjustable so you see that cup comes up as well as the column and the support so it is possible to get it really dialed in and yeah, you can see underneath there's a little bit of excess there so you've got lots to work with so we're going to put some fluid in here now guys now we are actually putting in honey because we can clean that out because this is just a demonstration for this um, for this video but your turntable out of the package will come with silicon fluid but that is harder to clean out so if, just for this purpose we're using some honey and you want it about a, a third full about a third full and this damping guys is also a little bit about personal preference as well the great thing is it's completely adjustable so you can put the amount of damping fluid in that you prefer depending on the kind of sound you're after a little bit less damping um, for a slightly harder brighter sound a little bit more damping to tone down the treble a wee bit really takes a little bit of playing and uh, figuring out what you like the sound of okay, so now we need to readjust our column to lower it back down and let me adjust the azimuth it can go a bit lower there we go it takes and all these adjustments take it because it's silicon fluid mm. all the adjustments take a tiny while to settle so yeah. you can't and so it'll just take a little bit of time for it to settle into the fluid before you do the final adjustments yeah so what you also kind of want guys is these little white tubes here on the side of the golf ball in the end they should be around about level with the top of this cup so that can be done either by having the support post lower down or the cup higher up but what you want to do is base it off how level your tone arm is so you can see at the moment we're still way off for our level but we've got this white disc here which simulates the foam mat as well as the thickness of a record and pretty soon we're going to uh, start being able to you know set up the tracking force and counterweight with this counterweight and the other one that's in the packaging with our cartridge here ideally you would have a scale or some way to um, to figure out what weight tracking force you are applying because this turntable doesn't have a actual reading or gauge on the end of it so you'll need yourself a scale which I'll grab now so what we've got here is um, a tracking force scale guys so just turn this on and then once that it has zeroed itself 
we just lift our turn arm up and gently lay it down and at the moment we're way too high we're 11 grams um, what is the tracking force of this 1.8 grams for this cartridge which is relatively standard we have another counterweight here which I believe we're going to need this is the steel one so now these are the two counterweights that come with the turntable guys you've got a lightweight aluminium one now both of these have a couple of little rubber rings on them which help you slowly guide them onto the back of the tone arm and this one here is a steel one which is a bit heavier I think that's the one we're going to need so I'm just going to set the camera up here and show you how to put those on so you're just holding the tone arm line that up there and then kind of easiest way to move it forward is to twist it as you go because it makes the rubber slide a lot better so now we'll just try to see what weight we're at now it feels a lot lighter so now we're at 1.17, we need a little bit more weight there, so we're going to just guide it forward a little bit more. 1.56, a little bit more, it's just fine adjustments. 1.87, so we're just a tiny bit too far there. 1.81, right, 1.82, there we go. So just getting this at the exact right spot and once that is on there you don't have to worry about that moving around it has the rubber rings in it which will keep it there so you don't have to worry about it changing weight on you spontaneously. Now we can lift that back off. So now that we have our counterweight in the right place the next thing to start thinking about is getting the level and position of this tone arm is set up right because as you can see we're still too low because if I lift that up there and set it down you see we've got an upward angle. So we actually need this pillar and the support mechanism to be higher to make this a little bit more level. Don't adjust this up while you've got your cartridge sitting on its stylus because that is going to probably damage the stylus as you move it. So if we just lift it up a little bit more, lock it, try again. Needs a little bit more. All this is just micro adjustments, one step at a time. I also need to adjust my azimuth a wee bit because we're, we're rocking off to the side there. There we go. Okay, I'm really happy with uh, the level of that for now. So that's where that's going to stay. The next step now is we have to bring this resting arm and the cup up to meet it. So I'm just going to loosen off the one for the cup and bring that up to meet the little white pieces that stick outside of the golf ball. About there. Lock it. And also loosen this one. And I like to bring this up so that it's level because it looks the best like that when it's not being used. They're not too tight because we want to still be able to uh, move that a wee bit if we want to be able to lock it while we're not using it. There we go, now I can twist that if I need to. So now I think we're all good. This is looking level. That is meeting in the right spot. This is good. And when we're sitting it on the record, we have a nice level tone arm. The next step is the azimuth, which I have already adjusted a few times in this video so far. It's really easy. This um, grommet just twists on the shaft and I'll show you that a bit closer up yeah okay so now that we've since we've got the fluid in here we do want to try and get this a bit more centered so you can see we're sitting over to this corner here a bit too much so we just want to gently move that grommet along and it won't move straight away because the damping fluid takes a while to get out of the way so just give it a couple of minutes sometimes you can give it a little bit of help and it'll push it out of the way and you can see from now we're looking a lot more centered in the cup and you may have to do this a few times when you're setting up your turntable for the first time because over the course of like an evening or a day it will actually slowly move back into its final position so you might find you have to adjust this just maybe two or three times over the course of your first week and you, yeah you'll notice when it's on the record it actually also sits in a different spot and so and that will and it does take some t when you when you drop, when you bring it over, it does take a couple of seconds for it to centre, always. Mm. So when you, when the act of picking up the arm, you can shift it, but it very quickly centres. And well tempered is the only car arm in the whole world that you can go like that and not do any damage to anything. Right. <laughs> so you've got no fear of damaging it. Okay. So now in terms of actually adjusting the azimuth as the final setting, guys, here's an example. Once we've set it up, you might look down at your cartridge and it's writing like that and you'll think that doesn't seem right it's probably coming out a bit louder on one channel so what you do without sliding it along the bar you just twist this grommet and you'll notice if I twist this with my hand this actually affects the angle that the cartridge is sitting on the record at so if you get down nice and low 
which is a bit hard with this pod, and then just try and make the bottom of your cartridge, which has hopefully got a nice flat edge, look parallel to the level of the um, of the record or the turntable. Well, I mean, with yeah, with this plat, uh, with this disc that we've got here, we've got some nice straight edges that we can try and match it up to. If we turn it a wee bit, you'll see it makes it look nice and parallel to it. And that's one of your final, that's pretty much your final adjustment that you make. And again, because this damping fluid is slow moving, you'll do a few adjustments over the uh, over your first week of having this thing. It'll take a wee bit of time to get the fine tune in, but once you do have it, it'll stay there. And that is pretty much the turntable completely set up. Now that we're done with it, we can just turn that. It's not gonna come out. Good to go. In case I, maybe I'll just go over this real quick. On the back here, this is your grounding post for your um, for your phono cable, red and white for your right and left channel. Your DC power supply input, now this is a 12 volt, it does come with its own dedicated power supply, but Well Tempered Labs also do make something called the DPS, which I'll show you now, which is this here. DPS I believe stands for dedicated power supply, and on the back of this we have an IEC plug input. So you don't have to have any big power adapters lying on your floor or at the wall or anything. And then you've got three 12 volt outputs here. So you've got two 500 milliamp outputs there for accessories and a 100 milliamp for powering your turntable. And that's actually what's powering this simplex here, which is our shop one that we use all the time for demonstrations. And that just plugs in the back. And then the only other thing on the back of the turntable is the on off switch, which is here. So if you're using this power supply to turn it on and off, you just reach over, flick the switch, and it will speed up to the correct speed. And then if you want to change your speed from 33 to 45, what we've got here is this pulley, if I can get it to focus, actually has two little ridges in it that the nylon thread can sit in. So the top one, which is the uh, narrower of the two ridges, that's your 33. And then your bottom one, which you just move down like that, that's your 45 and then it will spin up to the correct speed. If you have the dedicated power supply, the DPS, you can actually just leave this switch turned on and then you can turn the turntable on and off or start it moving by using this little on off switch at the front there and you'll see that it's actually gonna start spinning up now. And that's a really worthy upgrade for these turntables as well because by having that dedicated power supply, the A, there is a whole lot less noise going to the power system of this motor because that is a really good uh, power supply and also it means you don't have to have this thing sitting on your ground or anywhere near your power plug with this cable running up. But that is an optional extra, it's not, ne it's not necessary. Okay, and it looks like it also comes with a nice wee earth wire as well in case your phono cable doesn't have an earth wire built into it. And I believe that is everything for the well-tempered simplex, guys. Oh yes, so on the back here guys there is a tiny little uh, screw in there, it's really hard to see, with a little flat blade you can actually adjust the speed control of this motor really fine amounts and the reason you want to have that is over time, you may have this thing for 20 plus years um, over time the motors can you know uh, basically go out of the correct speed and if you're using a dedicated power supply the way these motors work is they just convert 12 volts to this motor, there is no speed controller in this whatsoever, which is why it uses the different levels of the pulley for speed um, change. So if you are finding that for some reason, whatever reason, the music is spinning at the wrong speed, you know, it might be coming out at 34 and a half RPM or 32, you can adjust that little uh, micro adjuster in the back there and get it back to the correct speed, which is another really handy thing to have because it means you can match yourself to exactly 33 and a third revolutions per minute to get better sound. And I think that is everything for setting up the well-tempered simplex guys. And then your final step when you're ready to play your record is take that off there, put your foam anti-static mat on, on goes your record, and you start playing. So that's it for this video guys, I hope it has been helpful to you if you're setting up your new well-tempered simplex, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Or if you're not doing that, I hope you at least found this video somewhat enjoyable. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let the music play and I'll catch you in the next one. Kakitiano.